Namo Puthai, this is Abhinav. I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from Middle Discourses 80. Title of the discourse is with Vekhanasa and it is also, the title is Vekhanasa Sutta. Right? Uh, the link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can read it and get your own insights. Uh, I am sharing a learning summary here. Now, Middle Discourses 79 where we discussed about uh, Sakul, Sakul uh, right? and uh, we discussed that Buddha told him that the path that was was following was not right and sim what happened here and Sakul Dai, uh, uh was like kind of you know very very kind of impressed with Buddha's teachings now what happened is that his teacher has come uh, it, apparently he is the teacher of Sakul Dai, uh, from that same tradition that Sakul Dai is practicing so so Vekhasana Vekhanasa sorry Vekhanasa went up to the Buddha exchanged greetings with him and he said the same thing that uh, Sakuldev was also saying. This is the ultimate splendor. This is the ultimate splendor. Now, Buddha last time also to Sakuldev, Buddha also said the same thing that when you say this is the ultimate splendor, you have to at least define what is splendor, right? That you don't define. That means your whatever you are saying is not having a demonstrable basis, right? So similarly, when here Vekhanasa came here to the Buddha, it's like he came to defend his teaching because. Uh, his student Buddha said that he convinced uh, Sakuldai that uh, this is teaching is not correct. Now his teacher has come. So again he said the same thing and Buddha again says the same thing that uh, uh, ultimate, ma he said Master Gautama, the ultimate splendor is the splendor compared to which no other splendor is final. So then Buddha said that don't you, you say that ultimate splendor is the splendor compared to which no other splendor is final, but you don't describe the splendor. Now Buddha is giving the analogy, same analogy that he gave to Sakuldi, similar he is giving to Vikanasa. That suppose there is a fi finest that you say, a person says, a man says that whoever is the finest lady in that in that particular area, uh, land, in that particular village, it is her that I want. So then the other person will say, who is she? Right? Whether she is an aristocrat, behemoth, pram, peasant, minion, because at that time those caste system was there. So he doesn't know that. Is he tall, short? What is her name? What is her clan? What is her skin? Black, brown, tawny? What village, town, city? He says, no. Then they'd say that, Miss, do you desire someone whom you have never known or seen? He said, yes. So, similarly, Buddha said that, uh, uh, Sad, when you are saying that ultimate splendor, you don't know what is splendor, then doesn't that man's statement turns out to have no demonstrable basis? He says, yes. So similarly, you also make a statement which has no demonstrable basis. Then Buddha gives an example of a like a beryl gem that was beautiful. Uh, and uh, uh, what is, Buddha says, what is more finer, beryl gem or a firefly in the dark? He said, firefly. Then which, he, Buddha said, what is more, more splendor, firefly in the dark of the night or the oil in the lamp? He said, oil in the lamp. And similarly, he, Buddha asked him several questions. And uh, 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 so Buddha says, so finally it came to that Buddha compared that full moon at the midnight in a clear sky or sun at the midday. So he said sun in the midday is more clear. So Buddha says beyond this Vignasa, I know many many gods on whom the light of the sun and moon make no impression. Nevertheless, I do not say the splendor compared to which no other splendor. That means Buddha said I know of very many things which are much more uh, kind of, uh, 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 what I will say, uh, uh, has a lot of splendor, right? But I don't say anything about that. But you are saying something that this is the ultimate splendor, this is the ultimate splendor without knowing the ultimate splendor, right? So then Buddha described the teaching. Buddha says five kinds of sensual stimulation. This has come in earlier discourses also. Buddha says, what five? Sights known by the eye, which is likable, desirable, agreeable, taste, smells, right? Touches. These are all the sensual pleasures. Five kinds of sensual stimulation. And the pleasure arising from this stimulation are the five kinds of sensual pleasure. Then Vikanasa said to the Buddha, it's incredible, Master Gautama. It's amazing how well said this was. How well you have said this. From the senses come sensual pleasures. From sensual pleasures come the best kind of sensual pleasure which is said to be the best thing there. Now understand here. Now Vignasa, Buddha is at this level and Vignasa is speaking from this level. Sensual pleasure is the source of suffering. 
right? Sensual the attachment that we have to all the sexual pleasures that great. Now here, Veganasa is not even like he is, you know, that dumb that he is saying that sensual pleasure is the best sensual pleasure, right? So now here, Buddha is not contradicting his teach, his his saying right away, because Buddha maybe has gauged gauged his level where he is right now. So so he says, uh, Buddha says on to him, Kachana. Since you have a different, Kachana is the another name of Agnasa. Since you have a different view, creed and belief. It means you are from a different tradition. So Buddha did not, beyond a point, Buddha did not want to kind of, you know, change his viewpoints and beliefs. Because sometimes what happens is, people who believe in a certain tradition, they have this closed view that my tradition is right. So Buddha did not want to change his, because he may have, may have guessed his level, where he is. So Buddha tried to just say, that since you have a different view, creed and belief, Unless you dedicate yourself to practice with the guidance of a tradition. That means, Buddha is slightly hinting, if you change your tradition and practice in the right tradition, then you will understand what is the best pleasure. Right? But Buddha always said, what is the best pleasure is? The pleasure of Nibbana. Pleasure of getting over all the sensual, freeing themselves, yourself from all the defilements. That is the greatest pleasure. Right? And then there are greater pleasures. When you do your first absorption, second, third, fourth jhanas, four absorptions, the kind of the calm, serenity, rapture that you get, they are the higher pleasures, right? So Buddha never said all pleasures are wrong, but he said there are higher levels of pleasure. But in this particular discourse, he is not saying anything because of maybe he has understood that Veganasa is coming with a preset notion that he wants to defend his teaching and he is not ready to understand the teachings of the Buddha. He is not open to the... And this is what is happening actually in the later part of the discourse, this will come out. So Buddha said that there are mendicants who are perfected, who have ended defilements, completed the spiritual journey, basically the arhans, right? They can understand the senses, sensual pleasure in the best kind. Now when Buddha said this, it was like all hell broke loose and Veganasa became angry and upset. He even attacked and badmouthed the Buddha saying that ascetic, it's like, you know, giving a curse that bad... Astrid Gautama will be worsted and all those things. He said, uh, these uh, teachers, they do not know the past and future. Still, they claim that rebirth has ended, spiritual journey has ended and all these things. And Buddha was calm as always because since the seeds of anger are not there in him, if someone even gets angry, Buddha did not get angry. right? So, Buddha remained calm. He said, Kachana, there are some ascetics uh, definitely who do not know anything like this and still claim that is a different matter and this is definitely, legitimately we should... We should refute their claims. Nevertheless, Kanchana, Buddha was taking him in another direction. Leave aside the past and the future. Let a sensible person come. Now that may again be a thing where Buddha is kind of, you know, slightly taunting Kanchana. That Buddha said, let a sensible person come to me. I will instruct him and I will release him from the bond of ignorance. I will help teach and instruct. Practicing as instructed. See, Buddha never said, I will release him. From the bond of ignorance. Buddha always said, I am a teacher. I can give you the instructions. You have to practice my instructions. So similarly here also it's coming. I teach and instruct them. Practicing as instructed, they will soon know and receive for themselves. This is how to be rightly released from the bond. And this is the bond of ignorance. Then Buddha gives an analogy that a little baby is stuck with a swaddling of the neck. As he grows and the senses mature, they are released from those bonds. Similarly, and they will know that they are released. Similarly, let a sensible person come who is not deceitful, who is not devious, who is a person of integrity. I teach and instruct him, practicing and instructed. They will surely soon know and see for themselves. This is how to be rightly released from the bond. This is the bond of ignorance. When he said that, Vekhanasana. Now, now, see this whole thing changed Vekhanasa's way of thinking. And Vekhanasa, who was a teacher of a lot of students, he said to the Buddha, Excellent Master Gautama, from this day forth, may Master Gautama remember me as a lay follower who has gone to refuge for life. So he became a lay follower of the Buddha. Right? So, so basically the, the, the thing here, what is coming out is that till the time we do not have the guidance of a right teacher, we think of certain things in a wrong way. For example, here Vekhanasa, despite being a teacher of many students and a very acclaimed teacher, was still having this view of, the, of seeing a sensual pleasure as the best pleasure. Because... Maybe this is how this his tradition, he has got the teaching. But when he came to the Buddha, Buddha told him, no, there is a higher pleasure. 
there's a much much higher pleasure and only when you understand you come in the guidance of a right teacher you will be able to understand and he was fortunate enough that he could change his thinking and he could uh, come in the refuge of the buddha so friends we are so fortunate to be in the buddha's teaching so let's keep following the teachings given by the buddha and let us move forward every step take every step and with all this what we read what we practice what we meditate slowly slowly we are basically on walking to the mountain of you know that the peak is the nibbana right so we are all walking and this is where what happens is the sangha right a set of spiritual friends walking alone to the mount mountain is not very joyous but when you have a sangha when you have people who practice and you come together join them and you practice together then it the journey becomes much more uh, enjoyable and easy also and that is why uh, do feel free to join our sangha group the link is the link bio is there you can find a link to you know apply to our sangha join our sangha practice let's practice together meet together every day right okay i hope this video was useful do share your insights your comments in the comment section namo buddhaye namo buddhaye